Good day all, or rather good morning. This is Saturday morning. Welcome to episode 17 of Dinner from the Dining Car. Today we're going to be going off the rails again. Now, this is a rather nippy January here in Southern California. And so, well, I'm quite sure that you all, when you think of cold weather, you reach up into the cabinet, you pull out that little red and white can of chicken soup, and you open it, you put it in a pan with the water, and then decide, this is inedible. This stuff's terrible. There's no chicken, there's no vegetables, there's just basically broth and noodles. Well, today, we're making... Uh, my homemade chicken soup. This is my own personal recipe that I've been using for years. The uh, you One of the first things you'll need is you'll need either a 7 to 8 quart slow cooker slash crock pot or an 8 quart uh, stock pan or Dutch oven. Um, I prefer to use the slow cooker because it requires less babysitting. Anyway, here's what you're going to need for this recipe. Chicken. I have six defrosted chicken thighs. I prefer to use chicken thighs because the meat's just not dry. It's a nice moist meat and it tastes really good in the soup. So we're going to use these chicken thighs. You're going to need celery. We'll use two or three stalks of that cut rough. You're going to need carrots. We'll use three, possibly four of these carrots. Again, we'll be, we'll be peeling them and then cutting them rather, rather small for the soup. You're going to need potatoes. Now these are, normally I just use white gold, but, or Yukon gold, but uh, this time I got a little medley of white and red and so we're going to uh, dice these up relatively small as well you're going to need ah, two containers of chicken broth this is what's going to really make the soup pop you're going to need dried rosemary now I would use fresh, but my garden doesn't have enough in there yet. The same thing with thyme leaves. You'll need some dried thyme leaves. Finally, in the spices, you'll need, and I have a bunch cut fresh here out of my garden, parsley. That'll all get chopped up and put in the soup with the other spices. You'll also need a little bit of salt and pepper to uh, sprinkle the chicken as you're browning it. But I'll get we'll we'll get there when we get there. So anyway, uh, you'll need a skillet as well because you need to brown the chicken before you put it in the Dutch oven and or crock pot. So that's it for the intro. Uh, let me get something on my feet because it's cold in here and my feet are cold. And uh, wash my hands. By the way, wash your hands a lot with this recipe because your whole your going to be dealing with raw chicken, so you're going to wash your hands a lot. And we'll be back in a bit and get this all started. See you then. Okay, here we go. Hi folks. Camera's on the tripod, so it's going to be down a little bit. But this will show me browning up the chicken. Again. Chicken thighs. Now you're going to brown these with the skin on because it is going to add a little flavor to the soup. Later, when after these have initially cooked in the crock pot, we'll be taking the skin off when we pull the chicken out to uh, shred it up. A little 
Basically, you're just going to brown these. Now back here, we have our crock pot already going. It's empty, but it's on high, so it's already preheated. And boy, this is just so exciting to watch. Chicken browning. Just enough olive oil in here to wet the bottom of the pan. And again, now that we flip it, a little more pepper. Salt. By the way, if you're interested in the mills that I use for the salt and the pepper, my wife bought these for me, what, Judy, about six, seven years ago? Yeah, and they're available on QVC. They're huge uh, storage capacity in these things, and they last forever. So if you want good salt and pepper mills, go on to QVC and order them. And they're not that expensive. Oh, yes. And she just said that they're not that expensive, so. Yes, the chicken is starting to get a nice brown on it. Okay. That will do it. Do it for that. Let's transfer these to a tray for a minute. And they already smell really good. Now you're going to leave the frying pan out because you're going to fry the potatoes once you dice them. That way they don't leach starch into your soup and make it all cloudy and yucky. Okay, sorry, had to had to move the camera. So here's your crock pot. Now this is already on high. You're going to take your chicken pieces Put them in the bottom of the crock pot. Oops, that one fell in. Oh no, suicidal chicken! Then, you're going to grab your two containers of chicken broth. And very liberally, just pour all that into the crock pot. Or stock pot or Dutch oven if you're using that. Okay. Now you're going to cover this and you're going to cook this for two hours. When that's done, you'll take the meat off the bones, put it back in the crock pot along with your veggies. Now it's 1230 here, so uh, in about About 2 o'clock, I'll be back and you'll see how I cut up the vegetables and the, the potatoes and the carrots and chop up the parsley to uh, get it in there too. We'll see you then. Okay, folks, here it is, about an hour and a half later. It's about 2 o'clock. Now we're going to start to work. Excuse me a second.
sorry, forgot my peeler. Now we're going to work on the carrots and the celery and the potatoes for the soup mix. So let's deal with the carrots first. You're going to get two or three, gee whiz, good sized carrots. Nice fresh carrots. And then you're going to cut off the ends because those are pretty useless. They're also the toughest part of the carrot. And yes, I washed my hands before I started this, so no complaining. All right, then you're gonna take these carrots and you're just going to peel them. This peels away the outer layer of skin and just leaves you the more the good part of the carrot. So just give me a minute or two to do this. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, earlier I said in the intro how nippy it was in California. Well, outside right now, it's sunny, it's beautiful, there's not a cloud in the sky, and it's 63 degrees. Go figure. There's a saying in California, if you don't like the weather, stick around five minutes. It'll change. Anyway, we just want to peel these up. just want to cut them in chunks. You want each chunk to be about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch long because they're going to cook down a little bit in the soup but you don't want you don't want them so small that they completely disappear. It's a judgment call. Once you get to the thicker end of the carrot, you may want to split it. And just put them in a bowl for storage for right now. Also suggest making sure you sharpen your knives before you do these carrots because if you have a knife that's even close to dull you're gonna hate yourself in the morning and these are about the right size again the thicker part of the carrot you want to split it Makers working again. I had some trouble with my ice maker this week that, oh, I don't even want to think about it. I definitely don't want to tell you. Sometimes I wonder why I bought a refrigerator with an ice maker. with an ice maker and, and ice and water in the door because I'm lazy. I really don't like a lot of work getting that had a bad pot on it. Again, just chopping up the carrots. Now when we're done with all this chopping, we've got one other step to do with the potatoes. We have to dice the potatoes up fairly small and then we have to fry them again so they don't leach uh, starch 
into the soup because that'll turn the soup cloudy and definitely not very edible. Okay, here's our carrots. Just put them in a bowl, set them aside. That's going to be plenty of carrots for this soup. Oh yeah, two, three carrots is plenty. All right, now we need to do the same with a couple of stalks of celery. Now when you get your celery out of the bag, you may have to do what I'm going to have to do. Take it over to the sink and rinse it. Because if you don't, you're going to end up with dirt in your soup. And that's no good at all. I'll be back in just a second. All right, I'm back from washing the celery. Now, if you get celery like I do, you'll notice the top sometimes has these parts you don't really want to eat, these little threads. Just toss those. Or if you're a little hungry, you can actually snack on them. And now it's up to you. You'll notice celery has this big white thing, white part at the end. If you want to use that, you can. If you don't want to use that, don't. If you're not a big fan of that white stuff, neither am I. So it goes bye-bye. And you just want to chop your celery up. And again, we're leaving it in, in kind of big pieces because it's going to cook down while it's in the while it's in the soup. It'll cook a lot of flavor into the soup too. This is what having a sharp knife will get you. Just nice, quick, little chunks of celery. I'm beginning to think three stalks is plenty. Stocks are bigger than I anticipated. Yeah, three stalks should be plenty. So you want to go two, maybe three carrots, three stalks of celery. The other one we'll put back in the bag. Put back in the bag. Okay. Then comes the potatoes. Give me a second. Have to cut open the bag. Need another bowl. <laughs> now you're going to dice these up. into just about into chunks about that big. So each of these potatoes you're gonna you're pretty much gonna quarter these potatoes.
shaking. Now some of the bigger baby potatoes you may want to cut in sixths because you don't want these potato pieces too big for the soup. They have to they still have to remain kind of bite-sized. Again, this is a judgment call. Uh, do whatever you think works best for you. Now, if you want, you can get full-size potatoes and cut them. Me, I prefer to use the baby potatoes because they don't, uh, they also don't turn to mush so quickly in the soup. Oh, that's probably going to be plenty right there. Okay. Now, I'll need to reposition the camera for a second. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get those potatoes you've just cut and we're going to stir fry them in a little bit in the remaining chicken grease and a little bit of olive oil. Now you're going to do this for one reason. Potatoes, as you probably all know already, are very starchy. And the problem is, when you put those raw into a soup, they will leach the starch into your soup and turn your soup cloudy. And while it's definitely edible, it's ugly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these potatoes Hear the oil heating up quickly, and we're going to quick stir fry them. And what that'll do, we'll brown them up, and that will that will seal them, so they don't leach uh, starch in your soup. You're also going to want to salt and pepper them. This is going to take a few minutes. So, while these are browning, so you people aren't just bored out of your minds, I'm just going to stop the camera and wait a few minutes, and I'll be back with you when everything's ready to be put together. Okay, we're back. Now, it's 
about 2.30. So here's what we're going to do. We have to take the chicken out of the crock pot. And it already smells really good in here. Now we're going to pull the meat off of these bones and pull the skin off. And we're going to put the meat back into the crock pot. Give me a second to check my potatoes over here. Yeah, those are ready. Those are ready. Yes. They're actually browning up nicely, which is what I wanted to see. Okay. Wash hands again. Here comes the fun job. You want to peel the skin off of the chicken. Because we don't want the f blobs of chicken fat, chicken skin, in the soup. But we cooked it in there so that the some of the fats from the chicken skin and some of the seasoning would get into the soup. Okay, next, you just need your knife, which, wow, is over here. And you just want to start cutting the meat off the bone, being really careful because I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this is steaming hot. This is definitely cooked. I can tell you that much. If it were a little cooler, I'd get in here and yank it out with my hands, but this chicken is really hot. And I want to take as, get as much meat as possible off of it. Take the bones and chuck them. Yeah, most of this is doing exactly what it should be doing. This meat should just peel right off the bone without a whole lot of work. If it does that, you're golden. However, sometimes you just have to grab it, burn your hands. is telling me, you're too old for this, Tony. You need to sit. Grab and cut. And cut. And you have to get in there with your hands sometimes. And just, wow, that's hot. Peel that meat. Ow, son of a gun, that's hot. That particular piece of chicken is toasty. This is murder on your back. Okay. Enough of this. Time to sit.
Don't you dare fall. And if you can, just break this chicken up into smaller pieces. Well, if I was smarter, what I would have done is pulled this chicken out before I started cutting the vegetables. That way it would have had a chance to cool off. But no, I had to go do it the hard way. Okay, this one last piece. Of course it has to be the huge piece. being very cooperative. No, don't skin me! <laughs> Boy, I'll bet these chickens were stubborn when they were alive. <sighs> okay, now that you've got all the bones out of there, you just want to get in here and rip this meat up into smaller sections. Because this is, after all, a soup, and you kind of want bite-sized chunks. If this were a stew, I'd say, yeah, leave them larger. But it's a soup, you kind of want smaller pieces. Wow, and they are steaming hot. Nice catch. So anyway, what you'll have when you get done with that is something that looks like this. Just chunks of chicken. Now, what you'll do is you'll take those chunks of chicken, put them right back into the broth. Once more time. Again, when you're dealing with chicken, you pretty much have to rinse your hands a lot. Okay. Measuring spoons. Of the chopped up fresh parsley, you're going to put about one, two, Three tablespoons of that. Oh, screw it. <laughs> Your rosemary. You're going to need at least a heaping tablespoon of that. heaping tablespoon of that. Wow, that still has its punch. Okay, 
then you take your carrots and dump them in. Your celery, dump that in. Move this out of your way. Then you're going to come and get your potatoes that you browned up. And with a slotted spoon, you're going to get them out of the pan, get them into the crock pot or stock pot or Dutch oven, whatever you're using. Now on Dutch oven or stock pot, you're going to want to make sure your heat stays low because over direct flame or direct heat, you will burn that chicken before it even has a chance to say goodbye. So. You want to use a, that's why I use a crock pot, I never have to worry about the heat. You'll give this all a good stir. Oh yeah, you'll give it a really good stir. Because the dried herbs will have a tendency to float on the top until they reconstitute a little bit. As you can see when I grab the camera, it's kind of everywhere. That's what you're going to look like in your crock pot. Again, the dried seasonings will float at the top until they start to reconstitute. So that's it. Then you cover it and turn your crock pot to low. And then you'll cook that for four more hours. Then everything will have a chance to get all happy. And uh, so we'll see you then around six o'clock. Okay. Okay, folks, here we go. It's been about four hours later. That's what your soup's going to look like. Now, what I suggest is if you're using a crock pot, turn this thing down to warm because it's already extremely hot. But there it is, ready to serve. Let's put the cover back on it. So, there you have it, folks. And that's my homemade chicken soup. Uh, enjoy it with some crackers. Judy has some goldfish crackers she can use if she wants them. But we're going to serve it with saltines or better yet, some brown and serve rolls. Uh, anyway, that's it. If you make this recipe, enjoy it because I know we're going to. And if you want a copy of the recipe, just email me at dinnerfromthediningcar at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching. See you later.